Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Oistan and I'm trying to become a bookworm. That's why I buy too many books. Some weeks ago I promised you that another book haul would appear suddenly but I sort of delayed it just because I was a bit fed up with my own book hauling but now I feel ready to show you the books I've bought so let's just jump straight into it. Just to have mentioned it if my voice is a little bit more Leonard Coney than it usually is that's just because I recently had Covid so don't mind that. We'll just start with the first book and that's Richard Osman The Man Who Died Twice. I recently read the Thursday Murder Club. It was just one of those books that was really heartwarming, cozy, funny and just a joy to read. So I thought this book is about the same people living in that retirement village solving crimes. And I've actually seen this exact copy I think in that store earlier and I didn't buy it just because the form factor is huge. So this is a lot bigger than the other one and the font size is gigantic but that I should enjoy, but it just didn't feel right having two different sizes of the two. I try not being that snobbish, so I feel kind of happy that I bought this because I really think I will enjoy it. In common with the first book, the second book is also from an author I recently read and it's Jon Kalmar Stefansson. And I recently read Summer Light and Then Comes the Night, but this is the story of Osta. And I don't know if this is translated, but that's directly translated for me at least. I just enjoyed the writing style in Summerlight and I think that will be transferable to other books. So that's why I bought this one. I also feel that I would enjoy reading more books from one author. I think that would make me feel more like a bookworm in a sense. Just because if someone mentions this author, I can say that I read that book and that book and that will make me feel great. So looking forward to this one as well. This next author I've been talking a lot about lately just because I've talked about authors and books from my past and that's Lars Schorbekistensen's Echoes of the City. And several of you mentioned this book and this book series in particular when I talked about him in other videos just because you thought this was great. And I do not know a lot about this book as well but it's about Oslo at least and we meet several people and it's a map of the inner circle of the city. That was weirdly put. This is a very limited area in city central Oslo. And I have really enjoyed how he describes people and people's fates in the other books I've read. And this is one of the authors I've read several books from. I will just take your word for it and assume this is as great as the other books have been. The next book is a book that I've been watching for a long time and it's this one. Guns, Germs and Steel by Jared Diamond. And this book tries to explain why the West has done so much better than the rest of the world throughout history. I know that that's a highly debatable topic, but this has gotten great reviews and it has won the Pulitzer Prize and it seems to have an engaging way of talking about modern history. Modern history? Yeah. It's probably modern history. I really think this will be an interesting read and hopefully a very entertaining and educational one. The next author on the list is Matt Haig with these two books, The Possession of Mr. Cave and Reasons to Stay Alive. I read Midnight Library last year and I thought that was a great book to start off with if you're a beginner reader just because it was fast paced, it had an easy language, more different from the books I've read earlier so I was really relieved when I started reading that book. He really seems to have a subject he likes talking about because the Midnight Library is about a person who tries to commit suicide and Reasons to Stay Alive is also about his own life and his struggles with depression and his reasons for why you should stay alive. And this book is also about a person that doesn't seem to have a great life and does a lot of bad things. I think this will be heartwarming. I don't know about this one, but uh, I'm glad I found them. At this point, I'm feeling that my nose is talking more than my mouth and I hope the microphone is picking up other things than I'm feeling in my head. Then a book I picked up for the cover and that's Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. And this is my first purchase that is laminated, not laminated, but someone has put the time to put it in plastic, which I must say I'm really impressed by. Not impressed by the job because it's really badly done, but uh, 
that someone has done it. I can't imagine someone laminating a book and then it ends up in a thrift store. What has happened? It's a mystery in itself. So I believe this is a mystery and it's also said to be historical fiction. With these types of number one bestsellers, I know that I will enjoy them at some level, so I never really read a lot about them. I just recognize the covers and then I buy them, and hopefully I will be happy. Recently I did a Nordic book haul, but right after I finished I recognized that there were no Danish authors on the list. So the day after I finished filming it, I went on buying Tove Ditlevsen's Child, Youth and Dependency. This is one of the most famous Danish books by one of the most famous, famous Danish authors. I felt like this was one of those significant books you have to read. It's an autofiction from Tove's own life. And for those who know, Tove didn't have the greatest life, so I think it will be gritty if that's the right term. One of the works from Nordic or Scandinavian fiction I feel like I have to read. And that's why I bought it. And this book, I suspect, hasn't been read before because it seems to be in mint condition. So that's also great. Speaking of authors that maybe didn't have the greatest life, this is John Kennedy Toole's Confederacy of Dunsies. He only managed to write two books before he left us. And this is a book I really have wanted to read and I've talked about this book earlier on my channel. And I thought this was kind of would maybe be difficult to read in English, but I was very close at buying it in English, but then I found it in Norwegian at the thrift store, so I'm very happy with that. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this book, you can check out my 10 modern classics books I want to read, because it's there. I think. I really hope it's there. If not, you can comment below and I'll show you the video where I mention it. Also on that same list is this one, Kala Suiz Safon's The Shadow of the Wind. I'm not going to talk anything about this book, just because all of you have read it at some point. I know not all of you have read it, but many of you would have read this book, I guess. The next one is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, also a modern classic, I would say. The year is 1327. Benedictinus in a wealthy Italian abbey are suspected of heresy, and brother William of Baskerville arrives to investigate. I have no idea why this is set in the 14th century, but we'll soon find out, maybe. At least I can put this in my shelf. The next book is Austerlitz by W. G. Siebold. I really picked up this book after I watched my fellow Norwegian booktuber Silis video about uh, Sebald. She seems to be really enjoying his books, and this book made me think about Auschwitz immediately while I heard the name Austerlitz and that's maybe the point. And I'll read a short description so you can see that I'm not that far away. A small child when he comes to England on a kinder transport in the summer of 1939. One Jacques Austerlitz is told nothing of his real family by the Welsh Methodist minister and his wife who raised him. So maybe I'm not that far away when I'm thinking about Auschwitz when I read the title. And I'm really looking forward to reading this book. It has gotten a lot of praise uh, throughout the years and I think I will really enjoy it. Also, I will link to Celia's channel beneath. You should check out her videos. Also recommended from a fellow YouTuber is Mörke by C.G. Sandberg. Mörke is translated to Darkness and this is one of the books, Lunacha books, uh, recommended to me in my comment section. It's about how we never seem to discover darkness anymore just because there is so much light pollution in the air and that destroys darkness for us and what we need to get out of the darkness as human beings. If that made sense. This is a topic I spend a lot of time thinking about just because I live in Oslo and it's never really dark just because of all the light pollution. But when I visit my cabin, as I've talked a lot about on this channel, it's not that many houses nearby, so it's completely dark. And it's like the sky is just falling on you, just because it seems so much closer. And it's really a great experience to experience darkness in the, that sense. So this is a book that I'm really glad was recommended to me. And I will also link to Elin's channel down below, so you can check that one out. 
before presenting the next books and the next author, I thought I would just read the description. A young woman named Aumaume follows a taxi driver's enigmatic suggestions and begins to notice puzzling discrepancies in the world around her. She has entered, she realizes a parallel existence, which she calls 1Q84. Or at least that's what I think the title is. No one really knows how you pronounce that title, or many people struggle at least. Including myself. And this is of course Haruki Murakami's books, and it's a colossus. It's a huge, huge book or books. These are books that I buy and really don't know if I'll ever have the courage to read because I think this will be for when I've read more and understand reading more in a sense. As you read more you understand more easily how to read a book I presume or that's my experience. I more easily read books now than I did before and I think maybe I'll read a couple of more books before I start reading these ones. But at some point I have to read some uh, Murakami and I don't think I will start here but I think I will end up here at some point. Maybe I'll start with this one After Dark by the same author bought at the same time as 1Q84. This book is set in Tokyo and it's all about one night where we meet a bunch of people who drift between reality and fantasy. And it's only about 150 pages, so maybe this is my ticket into the Murakami universe. If you think that this is the way to go when starting reading Murakami, please tell me in the comments. I don't expect any of you to remember this, but around 4-5 to five months ago, I think, I found Henry James's portrait of a lady and I was really happy. But then, when I made my book haul, I realized that I bought the first of two books and I thought about maybe getting rid of it, but I didn't. And luckily... I found the second one at the same store where I bought the first one, only five months later or so. I think the first book misses the second book. So I'll be really happy when putting this together with its brother or sister or anything like that. The next book is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is one of the books I really considered reading when I was about to read my first high fantasy novel. Just because this is a very intriguing front cover. It seems so mystical and mysterious. This has also gotten a lot of praise, hence the dices at the top. Also, in the fantasy booktube community, this is a very highly loved novel. I have thought about reading a chunky high fantasy book quite soon, just because the Mistborn book was meh. I couldn't really decide if I liked it or not. I didn't hate it or love it at least, that's all I know. So I was considering reading another high fantasy novel just to look at the differences in writing style, just to be more familiar with the genre. But this one as well is about 800 pages so it's chunky but reading fantasy tends to be more quicker than reading classics at least. So that was the first fantasy book of the bunch. And the second one is Terry Pratchett's a Hat Full of Sky. This is Discworld novel number 32. And my first meeting with Terry Pratchett was when I read Good Omens. Then I thought either I would love Neil Gaiman or uh, Terry Pratchett. And I started reading Neil Gaiman's books and I couldn't stop. So I haven't gotten around to read any books from Terry Pratchett yet. But I'm sort of collecting the Discworld novels as I see them thrifted just because I think at one point I will start reading them and there's a high probability that I will love them. So the Discworld is basically a flat earth floating around on a tortoise supported by some elephants. It's supposed to be very absurd. There are many novels and the themes are very different from novel to novel. So now I have the first book and the 32nd. At some point I'll start off with number one or something like that and we'll see where I end up. And now over to something completely different, and it's Toni Morrison's Beloved. This is a, only a novel I've heard a lot about. I do not know what it's about. Maybe that should be my new slogan. This book got her the Pulitzer Prize, and I think it's about a woman haunted by her past. I think this is one of the novels I have to read more about, and then consider if I'm going to read it or not. But when you buy a bag full of books for the same amount you would have paid for four or five books, this is what happens. The next author is an author that always comes up in Norwegian public when we discuss the Nobel Prize for Literature, and it's Annie Arnaud, 
with uh, the years. She's a French novelist and believed to win the Nobel Prize at least pretty soon. The Years is a personal narrative of the period 1941 to 2006, told through the lens of memory, impressions, past and present. I don't know about you, but writing a book of around 200 pages, about 60 years plus of your life, just seems impossible, especially when you're a novelist. With that being said, I think this will be an impressive read altogether. Then it's Maggie O'Farrell and The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox. Just because life is about giving second chances. And if you're wondering about what I'm talking about, you can check out my review of Hamlet on this channel. One of the reasons I really enjoy going to thrift stores and buying books is that once you find a book that you really want to read, you get extra excited just because you found it. It feels like a treasure. And one of those books is Quiet by Suzanne Cain. This is a non-fiction book about introverts and the tagline under here is the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. I believe that this book will be an important one and one I will learn a lot from. And I know that I have some introverts friends that really enjoyed this book just because they felt seen. And I feel often like we live in a society where introverts or people in general that doesn't, doesn't talk too much gets overlooked just because it's easier to overlook them. So that's basically why I want to read it. And then briefly, The Secret History by Donna Tart, recently featured in one of my videos talking about books I want to read. After that, many people gave me feedback about how terrible this novel is. So it seems to be a very splitting kind of novel, which always is kind of intriguing. So I'm not going to talk more about it. You can check out my other videos if you want to. And now over to the best title of them all. It's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. And this is a novel I pretty much promised some of you in the comment section that I would read. And when reading about it now, that doesn't bother me at all. A deeply satisfying thriller come fairy tale, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead is a provocative exploration of the murky borderland between sanity and madness, justice and tradition, autonomy and faith. Whom do we deem sane, it asks. Who is worthy of a voice? So this book is said to be thought-provoking while quite funny. And I just, the title just seems so grim. So my thought were that this was supposed to be a novel that you felt bad after reading, but now I really do not know what to expect. This has been my nearly read book for almost one and a half months now. So each time I've picked up a book, I've just seen this lying in the corner. I thought, maybe I can read this now. And I always end up not reading it and I have no clue why. Then over to a book I bought because it was short and it was gorgeous. And that's Ocean Wongs on Earth were briefly gorgeous. And as I said earlier, with these popular books, I just imagine I will love some aspect of it. And it's short in addition to that, which I need sometimes. On Earth were briefly gorgeous is a letter from a son to a mother who cannot read. Written when the speaker, Little Dog, is in his late 20s. The letter unearths a family's history that began before he was born. A history whose epicenter is rooted in Vietnam. I think I was more engaged with the plot earlier. Now I didn't quite connect with it. But I'm sure I'll get around to connecting with the plot at some other point. I also have another Nobel Prize for Literature shortlister with me here today. And that's Lyudmila Ulitskaya with Medea and her children. A novel also I've been looking for for quite a while. The interesting thing about this novel in these times is of course that she is a Russian author. I bought this time before Russia invaded Ukraine. So I did not know that this book was actually set in Crimea, a Ukrainian territory that Russia invaded some years ago, which just is very sad, but also I don't know what to expect, expect from it now because uh, Ulitskaya recently came out um, criticizing Putin and his war against Ukraine. I don't know if Russians or 
she looks differently on Crimea versus the rest of Ukraine, which uh, Russia and Putin are invading at this moment. But I'm really looking forward to reading this book and it will be extra interesting reading it this time around, unfortunately. I'll finish up this book haul with a book that I bought just because Obama thought it, this was a great book and that's Digging King Kong by James McBridge. I honestly can't tell you why I bought it now just because I thought about buying this book like a year ago and then decided that it was too expensive but now it was on sale so I thought we'll do it now. Deacon King Kong is a book about a community under threat, about the ways people pull together in an age when the old rules are being rewritten. It is very funny in places and heartbreaking in others. From a prize-winning storyteller, this New York Times bestseller shows us that not all secrets are meant to be hidden, and that the communities we build are fragile but vital. I remember now, I think I wanted to read it just because people said it was funny while it being important in a way. That seems to be a thing I could enjoy. But many people tell me that this is a book that it's hard to get into, so you have to give it some pages before you give up. So far I haven't given up any books, so that won't be a problem. So these were all, all the books. I think I'm finished with shopping for a while. At least I hope so. I won't seek out the thrift stores for a while, I guess. Thank you for watching this video. If you have suggestions for videos you want me to make, please comment below. I haven't thought much about it, but I thought that it would be fun if you guys gave me suggestions for videos you thought I should make. So please comment below if you have suggestions for videos. And if you're interested in any of these books, there will be links in the description. I hope you enjoyed this book all, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.